Hello, and welcome back to another Gamer's Mindset video from All of Us Studios. As always, I'm your boy BK, here with Pierce to break down the fundamentals of general movement for Overwatch and FPS games alike. Yo, what's up, all? If you like our content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you know every time our videos go live. If you want exclusive content and early access to get an edge on your competition, join our Patreon at All of Us Studios. Connect to us directly for coaching through Twitter and Discord, or watch us live every Friday night where we stream on Twitch. You can rep our brand with custom designed apparel that can be found on our website at usinfinity.com. And we'd love to hear from our community, so let us know what tips stepped up your game the most, or if you have ideas for future content you'd love to see from us. Now let's sharpen our knowledge and skills in this week's movement edition of Gamer's Mindset. Now here we're gonna assume that you just finished your placement matches and you landed yourself in bronze. Now, what we want to do as far as coming up with a mindset for a bronze level player is we want to focus on explanation. A few things that we can do to help ourselves be able to explain what our character is capable of doing and where our character should be in every game scenario is something that we should be able to explain to ourselves verbally. And when we can do that, then we can start explaining that to our teammates during the game and if all the players at the bronze level are able to vocally explain what their character is doing and what they're doing and how they're moving, then everybody's going to start to get a general understanding of placement and where the flow of the battle is and how everybody's working together. And that's the main goal here is for everybody to be able to verbally explain what they're doing and what they're trying to do. Now our tech tool that we're going to utilize at the bronze level is muting your teammates. At this level, we want to focus on you. We don't want to focus on everybody else. We try to simplify the game down to where you're executing your gameplay as perfectly as you can. So, and we take away all the stressors outside. So here we're going to mute the rest of our team. We're still going to talk to our team and we're going to explain what we're trying to do, but we're not taking in all their input yet. First, we're just focusing on output and then once we have a clear understanding and we feel comfortable doing that, then we can turn them back on at higher ranks and we can start to become a part of the team. Now we're gonna go through a few practice exercises with each of the characters in the game of Overwatch who have different general movements that are not on a cooldown. So something like a Winston jump pack, which is on a cooldown, will not be mentioned in this video, but other things like a soldier's sprint, which can be used at will and is just part of the kit. These are general movements for, for these specific characters. They kind of have an advantage when it comes to movement and uh, you'll notice that throughout all games, these guys will be moving in uh, particular ways all the time that are different from the other characters. And so we wanna highlight them now so that you can get an understanding of when you're playing with or against these characters, how they're going to be able to move, which is different than the other characters in the game that can only move in standard ways without their, without their cooldowns. In future videos, we're going to get into the cooldowns and specifically the cooldown, the cooldown movement abilities. And so look forward to that in the future. For Reinhardt, all we wanted you to see was that his movement speed decreases while he has his shield out. So as you see him make the jump the first time without the shield, you'll see it doesn't even get close with the shield out. Okay, moving on to Tracer. So Tracer it has a little bit faster uh, regular general movement speed than the other characters. She's not quite as fast as Lucio, but she does move at six meters per second uh, in comparison to the rest of the cast, other than Lucio, Tracer, and Genji, um, that all move at 5.5 meters per second. So what is our exercise that we're going to utilize with Tracer? Yeah, so with Tracer, because she has so many advanced movement skills, we'll have our own series for her, but just simply talking about her increased movement speed, a good timing practice, similarly to the soldiers, she won't make the top floor of the medic bay, but whereas most heroes have trouble jumping onto the moving platform from level three, uh, she easily hits the moving platform. And so you just want to make sure that you can make the timing and hit the moving platform. Okay, so moving on to Farah, uh, our first training exercise, we're going to be working on fuel management and we're going to be moving from our Death Star deep here in the southeast corner 
um, and we're going to be moving, trying to go from there all the way over to the Tower 2 platform and uh, acquire the target. So what is, what is a, what's the benefit of trying to do this, this practice? Yeah, so Farah's got interesting movement because she's usually always in the air. Uh, you're not going to be on the ground that much with Farah, and so you have a fuel source that you have to manage, similarly to Moira's fuel source when she's using uh, her heel. And essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be lightly tapping on your fuel source, whatever you have it hotkeyed to. You're going to be lightly tapping and trying to manage it as much as possible, and this allows you to stay airborne. A lot of times with fire, you're going to have targets directly underneath you because you float above them. And so here, what we're going to do is just track along with the bots and just jump from plat. We're going to jump from the columns to the roadblocks, and you're just going to try and track above the bot's head as long as possible. So the idea behind this is you want to rotate back and forth around this uh, first tower and just acquire a target. So you'll basically be peeking out of each corner, shooting a rocket, and then peeking out of the other corner and shooting the rocket, all while trying to manage your fuel, which is gonna be the trickiest part. Okay, moving on to Soldier. So what's um, interesting about his movement that's different than some of the other characters? Yeah, so Soldier actually has a sprint, which makes him faster and it's toggleable. So you can use it at any different time. And this allows you to move about the same speed as Hammond does. So, the reason this is important is just like Hammond, you need to know how his movement speed and timing work when you're jumping from one platform to another, and that leads us to our first exercise. What's our first exercise? So our first exercise is, uh, <laughs> we're going to go all the way to platform, uh, to the top of platform three. Level and three, level three up to here? To level three up here. Okay. And then we're going to jump from level three to the medic bay, the rooftop of the medic bay. From there, we're going to move in a smooth transition across the bridge to tower two platform and we're going to jump over to level two and that's where the beltway bot starts uh basically so there's railing on the back side of level two beltway bots back there and you just sprint and do this in a rotation it could be a big circle for you essentially gotcha so you're just going to loop this just a couple times as a part of your warm-up just to get used to his movement speed with the sprint uh, what it feels like in the air and timing the jump and timing the jumps timing okay. the jump because there would be a lot of times where you can sprint right off the edge and you miss the jump by just a little bit and sometimes that jump is into a goalie of death right gotcha. so so perfect so moving on to his second exercise uh, we're gonna head down to the east market and uh, what are we gonna do here so we're gonna be back to the figure eight columns but there's a specific reason for that when soldier is playing because of his sprint He's one of those DPS that should be constantly readjusting position, and you have to run from a, a lot of enemy fire all the time. And so here, when we're doing the figure eight, it's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be aiming at the ground when we're running on the figure eight. And what this allows us to mimic is getting away from fire and moving to a better position. And looking down, why do we want to do that? So we're looking down to actually avoid getting your, if we look down while we run, our head box is missing from behind. So when someone's shooting at you as you're running away from them, if you're f exactly vertically erect, when you run, your head can be shot from behind as you run away. Okay. I With see. Soldier, as you sprint aiming down, your head is actually blocked from their view and they can only hit you in the ass. I see. So just, <laughs> just body shots, just booty shots. Just booty shots, that's all, yeah. That's all you're getting. Exactly. And so this allows them to get away better and move to a better position. I see. So exercise three now, we're going to move over to the medic room. And uh, what are we going to do here? So here, because of the way he sprints and jumps, you want to practice turning a corner and jumping, and then maybe acquiring a target for a rocket shot. And this is just a really good practice for moving, navigating around a corner with a jump. And basically the idea is we're going to just move around the, the pillar and practice staying on the pillar. And this should be enough practice for round one right here. Instead of wall riding uh, up a corner, we're just gonna literally practice riding the pillar. And so that's going to be the work here. And then the second exercise is going to be literally swapping into the boot. And that's the movement because that's going to be one of the most common movements you do is from a top down dropping on fools. Okay, moving on to Hanzo. We are going to head over to uh, Tower 1 in the northwest corner here and uh, do some climb and, and uh, target acquisition here. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be utilizing 
uh, Hanzo, just like Genji's verticality, he can climb up the wall, and essentially what you, you're going to be practicing doing, because you must, for the target acquisition, this is part of the movement, you're actually going to be pulling you're you're actually going to be pulling the trigger and actually notching an arrow and then climbing and the reason you do this is because as you hit the apex of your climb right before you want to break off and acquire your target and this is going to be probably one of the hardest motions you ever learn in overwatch with a hero okay so after that our next practice tool here is we're going to move down into the market and uh hop up on the roadblocks and use a little pullback right and uh and try to acquire some targets here so why why is this uh a good practice for people to to work on yes so just like with genji hanzo also has a lot of forward momentum when he climbs so just a quick uh left stick back bump will allow you to land directly on the top of a platform that might be small and this also helps you practice a 45 degree vertical angle down so that as you climb just like genji you're going to be acquiring head targets as you go so essentially you just want to climb the small roadblock you do a quick back left bump to get yourself stable on the platform and you're already angled at a 45 degree angle down so your heads are ready to be clicked so yes here what we're just practicing is we're doing literally we face the the east columns in the market and we climb them but we're turning laterally to get strafing floating target acquisition so essentially we'll just be climbing up either side of these columns and just looking to our left or right and we're always going to be looking in the western di direction towards the mountaintops and that's where we're going to practice the lateral floating target acquisition and so literally that all that is is just climbing each side of these pillars and looking towards that mountain and trying to acquire a target. And you can use various ranges as you get good, close or far. You have all four of the bots who are strafing on you. And strafing targets are some of the hardest targets to hit, so this movement's really important for that strafing target acquisition. Okay, moving on to Genji. We are gonna start with his level two to medic roof double jump practice. Yes, so with Genji, Genji uniquely gets the double jump, so him and Hanzo both have a wall climb and they get a double jump. The key is with the double jump is that once you've used it, you don't get it until you hit a flat surface that you actually are on. And so what we do with the level two to the medic roof is we're just practicing aiming down at the market and jumping from level to level. And a lot of times you're going to miss a jump potentially on to the medic roof. And so this gives you a chance to acquire the roof and climb it too while you're at it and cause a little climb. And this helps you just stay with your target acquisition and kind of be cognizant of the areas around you. And this will help you do the, the wall climb. Um, okay, so moving on, we're gonna go over to the East Market columns and uh, we're gonna do some climb and acquisition there as well. Yes, yeah, so right here, we're gonna wanna be climbing over the roof and acquiring targets. And here, we're gonna be trying to keep at a 45 degree angle as we climb over the columns and then jump from column to column or jump over the columns. And both of these things can work because you're gonna do this very often. And especially with the remote, it's gonna take a lot of practice, but you're gonna be feeling a lot of openness in your movement and your target acquisition if you learn these techniques. And the uh, final exercise is going to be a double jump between those East Market columns. So the East Market columns, yes, there'll be a double jump and even a jump to the roadblocks in the market too. And we're kind of going to play, essentially the game is the floor is lava. And that is the easiest way to describe it. We're just trying to not touch the floor. And this just helps you acquire your jumping and positioning and not falling down into the masses of the team. The more you can stay above them, the harder it is for them to hit you and the easier it is for you to hit them and evade their shots. For Hammond, we just want to be on the East Market columns doing a figure eight and just getting used to his movement. Now for our final hero, we have Baptiste who has jump boots, which you can charge up and jump up onto the medic bay, up onto level three and on top of level three here on the rooftop and you can just work on practicing those as you move about the training ground.
To recap on this episode of Gamer's Mindset, we went over going into the game with motivation to verbally explain your hero movements, positioning, and targets. In doing so, you will begin to recognize how your chosen hero fares in different game scenarios and how your team adjusts to your communication to play with you. Remember our tech tip where we recommend muting the rest of your team at this time to keep the game pressure level low as you focus on your role individually. We will cover how to communicate with them in future videos. Don't you worry. Finally, we hope you run through all the different general movement exercises we have outlined in the training ground. In doing so, you will gain the much needed understanding of how these heroes can move all the time, the difficulty of the movements, and therefore you will learn to predict where certain heroes will be during a match. We will be going through cooldown movements in future videos to expand on this further. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Gamers Mindset. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future training videos. And we would love to hear from you in the comments below or through any of our many social media platforms that can be found at All of Us Studios and usinfinity.com. Take care and be well, my friends.